Good morning. I'm the Reverend Julie Ann Lapp. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning for our morning meditation. And we are in mid-October, and I think of the brief fall that lies before us, and enjoying each day as we can. Let us start our meditation off with these words. And this is from Walt Whitman. I swear there is no greatness or power that does not em emulate those of the earth. There can be no theory or any account unless it corroborate the theory of the earth. No politics, song, religion, behavior, or whatnot is of account unless it care, compare with the amplitude of the earth, unless it face the exactness, vitality, and impartiality in the rectitude of the earth. Walt Whitman was a poet who wrote about nature. And I think there are a lot of lessons in nature, you know, the patience of the mountain, the calm of the water. And I know when I walk among trees, the sounds of air and leaves and brush underneath my feet help me ground myself in the moment. And I think especially uh, in the midst of busy times and stressful times, finding those moments of grounding and breath help us to amplify our spiritual practice. So I invite you today to think about some moments that have grounded you and how you might recreate those in your life, whether it's more walking or more uh, time of quiet, um, time of presence with your thoughts or feelings. Being able to ground ourselves is one of the greatest gifts that we can find in our modern and busy world. So I think about um, also being a part of things around us. Um, this is something that talks about that. Uh, this is uh, Audre Lorde. If you come as softly as wind within the trees, you may hear what I hear, see what sorrow sees. If you come as lightly as threading dew, I will take you gladly, nor ask more of you. You may sit beside me, silent as breath. Only those who stay dead remember death. And if you come, I will be silent, nor speak harsh words to you. I will not ask you why now or how or what you do. We shall sit there softly beneath two different ears and the rich earth between us shall drink our tears. And that's Audre Lorde reflecting on how nature and the earth can soak up some of the pain inside us. I know when I have felt things too big for me to deal with, I'll often head to nature, head to the woods and just walk it off or breathe it off or try and let it go, give it to Mother Earth and just take it outside of my body. And, and there's that healing presence of being with something larger than yourself. And, and so whether you believe in God or Mother Nature or just life, finding something larger than yourself puts things in perspective. You know, people talk about scientists not having faith. I think it takes a lot of faith to have <laughs> to be a scientist. You have a lot of theories. You're part of a huge universe, and you're making ideas and thoughts, and um, and you can have faith in science. So, I think no matter what our beliefs, we can find a connection with wonder and mystery. In fact, that's one of the seven. Um, that's one of the sources of wisdom in Unitarian Universalism. Is um, that direct transcending mystery and awe. And it's those moments where you go, wow, that I know my heart, you know, that might be kind of tired and uh, shriveled from just dealing with so much just kind of opens up and expands. I think about the um, recent harvest moon that was in the sky and just looking up at the big orange moon in the sky and just going, wow, beautiful. And yesterday we went for a drive out into um, Fall Creek just to see the contrast of the leaves and the colors. And Saturday morning I was walking with um, a member of the congregation 
um, in Owen Park, and it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. So I invite you now to quiet your mind, let your breath settle, find yourself grounded in this moment, and we will take a moment uh, to have some meditation. I'm going to ring the bell and invite you to find that quietude and mystery and awe. Start to come back into your breath and in your body. Shake your fingers out a little bit. Loosen up. Welcome back to this moment and this time. It's funny when you meditate, it seems like uh, or at least I know, I feel, why don't, why don't I do this all the time? <laughs> How great I feel and my mind feels cleansed. It's almost like uh, people talk about cleansing your palate. It cleanses my mental palate and makes space and breath. And I feel so much more connected and alive. 
than when I'm just walking around with all my stress in my shoulders. <laughs> Letting that ease into my body is such a gift to my mind and my spirit. I was thinking about in finding that connection with mystery and awe, it's almost like a companionship. I know that uh, for many of us uh, during this time, it has felt uh, lonely. Even when you have some family at home, it can feel lonely to um, be in this pandemic because we don't do the things that we normally do. And trying to find that feeling of companionship, certainly we can connect online and by phone or sometimes if we're lucky by distance visits. But I know for me, I've been looking for that sense of awe or companionship in my spirit. And I think I found that while I was gardening this year, that sense of not being alone, but being a part of a greater system, part of something bigger than myself. And I know when I was little, I felt that way um, because I had a very um, childlike understanding of um, my childhood faith and, you know, saw the big God in the sky with the grandfather beard. And that was very comforting. And as an adult, I continue to want to have, you know, my beliefs with the integrity of what I feel is true and seeking that out, those moments of feeling held and um, connected are very beautiful. And that can happen in meditation, um, walking in nature, singing. But that moment of connection is important. So I invite you this week to think about what is it that connects you to wonder and beauty. Maybe it's uh, hearing children. I'm really lucky to live on a street where I see kids walking to and from school. And it's really fun to watch them pause and look at the labyrinth that we made this summer. And especially um, when we have our fairies out in the labyrinth, the little, little ones will go, ooh. <laughs> it's just, it just lifts my heart so much. Well, I think we will close today with um, some words from our book here. I'm trying to turn to the right page. This is uh, from Nancy Schaefer. This making of a whole self takes such a very long time. Pieces are not sequential, nor are our supplies. Let me say that again. This making of whole self takes such a very long time. Pieces are not sequential, nor are our supplies. We work here, then there, holding up a tattered fabric to the light. So past dark, intent, using all of our thread. Sleeves may come before length, buttons before a rounded neck. We sew at what most needs us and ask us so again. The self is not one thing once made unaltered, not midnight task alone, not after others work. It's everything we come upon, make ours, all this fitting of what once was and what has become. Read that last part again. It's everything we come upon, make ours, all this fitting of what once was and has become. So we are ever evolving and unfolding. And um, in the Unitarian Universalist tradition, we believe that, you know, wisdom keeps happening. We don't believe that there is only one source of wisdom and a sealed truth that's done and made, you know, and that we have the power to discover our faith and journey and, and the ability to do so. And so um, our, our hymn book and our her book is called uh, The Living Tradition. And so I think about that, that we are living and changing and breathing. And I like to think um, about the divine in the same way. And um, that something that changes and grows with us, not just this grandfather God in the sky. Well, friends, I wish you a peaceful week and a chance to connect something bigger that moves you, helps your spirit rest and grow. 
Namaste. We'll see you next time. I hope you can join us at 10 a.m. for our service. We'll be talking about Rumi and cultivating a mind of love. Thank you.